That's how it all started. That was the uh, clerk from Cup Foods uh, showing the two rookies who responded to the call. They were partners that day. Two rookies, three and four days on the on the job, uh, third and fourth shift. One of them is Jay Alexander King. There he is. Um, day three for him, third shift as as a police officer, and this is the case he's working on. Um, he's in federal court with the other two uh, officers. From the case, not Derek Chauvin, he's already pleaded guilty, but all three of them on trial in federal court. Um, King took the stand, was cross-examined today. Let's bring in Court TV legal correspondent Julia Janae joining us live from St. Paul, Minnesota tonight. Julia, um, how did that cross-examination go? It, it's, it's never easy for a defendant. Everything is on the line. What happened? Vinny J. Alexander King took the stand the second day with prosecutor uh, Amanda Serdic asking him those cross-examination questions. He remained confident, calm, very straightforward in his answers, responding. Uh, really not a shift, not a change in demeanor from how he was on direct. But she really went in after him, pushing back on uh, their claim that they have put in front of this jury that he was simply following Derek Chauvin's orders and didn't have much wiggle room to do anything different. Here's a look at some of the quotes from inside of court. Of course, there are no cameras, but here's from our notes uh, of things that she said, you didn't convey in the use of force review that Chauvin placed his knee on Floyd's neck. This is a use of force review that would have been done by people much more senior than even Chauvin. King said, we are not to explain other officers' objectives. Chauvin could explain himself. He did not. And then moving on to uh, the, a continuation of that cross-examination, as she asked, are you trained to stop someone from committing a crime? He said, yes. She asked, can use of force be a crime? He said yes, if it's perceived. Uh, really, uh, a continuation of that cross-examination today uh, in front of this jury showed that he did understand that there may have been a medical need, but he continued to maintain that he passed any information that he had on to Chauvin, and he waited to see what Chauvin would do with the information that he passed along. This is an interesting case. I don't know what the jury is going to do here. It, it's a different case than the Chauvin case, actually much different, and each of these defendants in a different position. Um, let's talk about use of force. Uh, they put up a use of force expert the defense did today. Uh, how did that go? They did put up a use of force expert. I think the highlight from Eines' testimony is that he does not deny that George Floyd was under unreasonable force by not only Derek Chauvin, but these officers who were holding him down. Steve Imes was witness number three for King's defense, and he's someone that you may recall from the Kim Potter trial that's actually going to happen tomorrow with the sentencing. He was her use of force expert, and uh, unlike what he testified to in that trial where he said everything she did was reasonable, he did say that there was unreasonable force. Once Floyd was under control of the officers, it was more force than necessary when he was on the ground, face down, under the weight of those officers. He said that King placed his knee on Floyd's upper hips, moved his knee from the buttocks area to the hips. He said that would be consistent with contemporary police training and practice, that it avoided the, quote, uh, important areas, the areas that matter in the body. And he emphasized King's lack of experience and interaction with Chauvin. He said he was deferring to him as a senior officer. We heard heard that reiterated throughout his testimony, not denying that there was unreasonable force and that these officers should have turned Floyd over in the side recovery position. But he says that what King did was justified because he was under an obligation based on his training to do what Chauvin asked. 
Julia Janae in St. Paul, Minnesota tonight. Thank you so much, Julia. Let's bring back in our think tank. Lara Uretzian, Carmen Rowe, Molly Palmer with us. Um, does anyone think that J. Alexander King, day three on the job, intended to commit a crime that day? That was his intent in that moment, was to commit a crime. Does anyone? So does anyone think he should be convicted of a crime here? All right. Many, I do. Uh, oh, wait, wait. Do. You do? Yes. Okay. What crime? Well, I think the one that he's on trial for. I think the, the defensive theory here is outstanding. It's much better than we saw in the first trial, that they trusted Chauvin and he let them down. The problem is this prosecution has done a tremendous job booking and paging them with the video that defies and directly conflicts with those statements. And I think that's a problem. And as a juror, I wouldn't have a problem convicting him. But isn't part of a part of this what makes this trial a little differently is the the mental state. This isn't like an accident. This isn't recklessness. This this he has to his his purpose in what he was doing was I am going to commit a crime. I'm going to deprive George Floyd of his civil rights. That's what I'm doing here. That's my purpose. That's what we honestly think that's what he was doing that day. That's what was on his mind. Molly, what are your thoughts about this? So you're right, Vinny, in that like this violation of civil rights, federal prosecution, any federal prosecutor that does these type of cases, they're so difficult to prove. As a defense lawyer who has defended these types of cases, we actually have an easier time winning them. I thought his testimony on the stand went really well. I mean, he is, even though he was a new officer, he has training on how to testify. And he was also able to get into you know, his background and his interest in becoming a police officer. It was very compelling. He talked about his family and his commitment to protecting and serving. The defense here is that they were relying on Derek Chauvin, their supervisor, in terms of what to do and that what they were doing was, like the expert said, it was, it was commiserate with what they were trained to do. And beyond that, Derek Chauvin was giving them instructions that they were merely following and that they were obliged to follow given their policies and procedures as junior officers. Do I think Derek Chauvin is 100% guilty and absolutely should spend the rest of his life in jail? Yes, this is a different trial. Lara, this is what I've been, been talking about a lot. Because the you know, prosecution is saying you should have done this, you should have stopped Chauvin. And that's what people say, you should have stopped Chauvin. You've been trained, you're supposed to stop a crime. Let's, how would that play out, right, Lara? Like, if J. Alexander King, the rookie, right, what is he supposed to do? Shove Derek Chauvin off of George Floyd? And what happened, what would happen to J. Alexander King if he shoves Derek Chauvin off of George Floyd? George Floyd survives, there's no George Floyd... Um, trials right he because he survives there's no uh, uh wrongful uh no criminal charges against chauvin what do you think happens to king i think king gets kicked off the force i think king gets prosecuted for assault he's in a no-win position in, in 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 the way that he has now been cornered by these prosecutors you're 100 percent right Vinny. i mean can you imagine this junior officer on his third shift Shoving aside Chauvin, I mean, I, I can't even imagine it. He'd be too scared to do it. And plus, he's deferring to someone who's a lot more experienced. Clearly, I mean, yeah, I think he did very well on the stand. I think Tu Tao, who also testified, did great. I have to admit, I didn't expect what I've heard. Uh, and I think the defense is doing way better than ever expected, especially after we watched the Chauvin trial. And I think these officers do have a chance here. They do have a chance to hopefully get acquitted if they can show, for example, King was saying, the use of force expert said, he had his knee in an area that he legally can have. I mean, they're trained to have it. It's not in an area like Chauvin where, you know, George Floyd could not breathe. So he's doing, he's following procedure. And the one thing that he couldn't do, and I'm not sure how we can expect him to, to have done, is to shove someone like Chauvin off of George Floyd. He's a junior, he's on his third day. Can you, I, I can't even imagine it. So well, I, and I, know I, I just think it's an and I think you're in a different position. Absolutely, I think it's an unfair position for King because he's he's in a lose lose. He's in a lose lose because because if he shoves Chauvin, he's he's off the force number one, and they're going to prosecute him for that. Absolutely, I I believe that. Okay, a lot more to get to. 